Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In today's episode we're going to be solving a physics 7b position, velocity and acceleration practice problem, the child and the trampoline. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it helps this channel a lot. So let's go ahead and read the problem. So you have the following situation. So you have a person falling from some height above a spring, then the person makes contact with the spring, then the spring is fully compressed, and then the person is launched back into the air. So this is some sort of trampoline type of problem. We're giving a simplified approximation of the person's acceleration. And uh, the thing that we have to do is, first of all, accurately complete the velocity graph using the information from the acceleration graph. Uh, the first section of the graph is already done for you. And part B, indicate the sections on the velocity graph which corresponds to the points B, C, and D. It is sufficient to draw a line towards the time of interest, A, is already indicated on the velocity graph. Okay, so let's go ahead. So as you can see, I have everything written down here. Um, in my notes, I have the acceleration graph over here, so all of the chunks. And I do have the scenario over here, which is drawn. So we basically need to do two things. We need to complete this velocity graph using this as information, and then we need to find where the points B, C, and D are on this graph over here. A, we were already told that is over here, so we don't really have to worry about A. So uh, what's interesting about this problem, or what I found, find interesting about this problem, is that we're giving the acceleration and we need to um, take this information and just find out the velocity graph. So as we know, the acceleration is the slope of the velocity. So the acceleration is just uh, the change in B with a change in time. And slope is just, you know, uh, changing, uh, changing vertical over changing horizontal. So let's just go ahead and analyze what we have. So this is correct because this slope is negative 10. And as you can see, for every tick mark that I move to the right, I move 10 tick marks down. One tick mark to the right, another 10 tick marks down. Um, one tick mark to the right, another 10 down. One right, another 10 down. So this is in complete agreement with this chunk right here, which is negative 10, because it basically means you're gonna go down 10 for every one you go to the right. Now, this next part over here, is uh, the acceleration is equal to zero, which means that for every tick mark to the right, you're gonna move zero spaces up or down. So for the next two tick marks in our problem, uh, we're not gonna move up or down. So this is gonna be our velocity. Now for the next two tick marks, I'm working over here, the acceleration is equal to 10. And that this means that for every tick mark to the right, I want to be moving uh, 10 tick marks up because this is positive 10, so that means 10 up. So this is one to the right and I should be moving 10 up, so over here. This is another tick mark to the right and I should be moving another 10 up, so over here. So let me just go ahead and connect the dots. There we go. Now, um, I'm going to be working with this part right here. The acceleration over here is equal to 20, which means that for every tick mark that I move to the right, I need to move 20 tick marks up. So this is one, one step right, 20 up, so that is over here, and then one step right, and then 20 tick marks up, so over here. Now let me just go ahead and connect the dots for the two tick marks. There we go. The next part of our problem is again positive 10 acceleration. This means that for every tick mark that I move to the right, I move 10 up. So this is one tick mark to the right and then 10 meters up. One tick mark to the right, 10 meters up. So again, I connect the dots like this. 
Now the next part is acceleration is equal to zero, which means that for every tick mark to the right, I move zero spaces up or down. So I have two tick marks, but I'm not moving up or down. And now for the rest of the problem, I have uh, acceleration is equal to negative 10. So for every tick mark, I'm moving down 10 spaces. So let's see, I start at 40, one tick mark, 10 spaces, 10 spaces, 10 spaces, 10 spaces, 10, 10, 10, 10. So as you can see, this follows this because for every tick mark I moved to the right, I went down 10 spaces, negative 10. So let me just go ahead and connect that. And um, this is it for the velocity graph. It really is very easy when you have the acceleration because you just have to go tick mark by tick mark and just making sure that both of these agree, which they do. So now let's just go ahead and do the uh, next part of the problem, which is figuring out where is position B, C, and D. Now let's let's take a look at, um, I'm interested, first of all, I'm interested in C because this, this child is basically moving down. Then this is a point where the child basically uh, starts contact with the trampoline. This is a part in which the trampoline is basically contracted all the way and the child is, you know, at the lowest that he is going to be and he's ready to go up. So he basically is changing directions from down to up. And this is the point where the child already went up and is ready to go down again. So let's see. I think that the, fir the, the very first thing that, you know, pops to me is that um, this point right here has to be C. That is really the first thing that I see on this graph because this child was going down and is ready to go up. And on this graph, the velocity is negative, which means that all the way on this space, all of this graph where the velocity is negative, this child is going down. A negative velocity for the x for the y component means means that you're going down. So if you were going down and you're ready to go back up, which is to cross the axis to the positive side, then that just means to me that c has to be here because this is a point where you're just gonna go up. Now in a similar manner, it is also very clear to me that this point right here has to be d because all of this over here, a positive velocity means that the child was going um, up, but over here you have a child that was going up and now is gonna start going down. So remember, every time that you cross the axis, you, you switch directions. So over here you went from negative to positive, so you went from down to up. Over here you're going from positive to negative, which means that you're going from up to down. So this has to be D because this is the point where you literally switch your direction. Um, so this is C, this is D, A was already given. And uh, in this sense, uh, so this point right here has to be B, mostly because your acceleration over here was equal to negative 10. So this is basically a free fall. The only force that you are feeling over here is force by gravity. But now that you're touching the spring, that uh, basically means that you have balance forces because your acceleration is equal to zero in this point. It also, so you have basically, you know, your force by gravity, but now you also have a force by a spring, a contact force with the spring. So this, at this point, uh, what this is saying is that these are balancing out. You are still going down, but now your velocity is basically constant. So this has to be point B because if you're not, ju just think about it this way. Here's another way to look at it and just to figure out that this has to be B. If the child continues to go down, like if a child is going down and he hasn't touched anything, then there's no reason for the child not to just keep going down in this straight path, right? Like the child is very happily just doing its own thing. And uh, if there's nothing in the way of the child, then this graph is just gonna stay on this turf 
All of this is caused by some disturbance, which is, you know, the existence of the trampoline and just the hitting the trampoline and all that stuff. But you just gotta know that this point where everything starts changing has to be the contact point because again, if there were no spring, the child would kind of just continue moving like this. So in that sense, this just has to be B and we just were very sure about that. So um, anyways, this solves the entire problem. We have a complete velocity graph and we also have our points very well defined over here as instructions told us. If you found this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.